Hello, everyone. Great to be here at BaselCon. My name is Alex. I'm the developer evangelist, CEO, founder at Aspect Build. I would like to introduce my co-speaker, Marvin the Robot. I've got a couple of them right here with me. Does anybody not gotten one yet? OK, here we go. There's one over there. <laughs> OK, cool. OK, I was, my, my throw, this, this is not the right way to throw them. So uh, Marvin is actually a Bazel expert. I didn't introduce him before. He's going to show up in my talk from time to time. First of all, very excited that we were featured on TechCrunch. Uh, it's nice to have funding, but it's also nice to know that we will definitely still be here in five years. Um, I've also been running a Bazel live stream and podcast. Uh, hopefully some of you have seen this, as we've had over 10 episodes so far, trying to have experts on from across the entire Bazel ecosystem. Um, and if you know somebody you would like to appear, please let me know. I'm also looking for feedback about whether the content that we've had on this so far uh, is useful for you. You'd like it to be more technical, less technical. So I'm going to spend most of my time talking about Aspect Workflows, which is my company's product. It is a large-scale, multi-language developer platform. What is a developer platform? I'm going to try and explain it in terms of Dora metrics, which is an idea of how well you're doing and probably many of you are familiar with these, how well we're doing at developer productivity, right? But what we really want is capabilities that our teams can gain so that they get better at Dora metrics. And so I believe a developer platform, its job is to up-level your ability to hit on all of those capabilities. I'm going to describe this using this uh, navigational aid, uh, these three loops. So you'll start off in your project with kicking off a new project, and you'll be in this project loop all the way until it's deprecated a few years later. During that time, you'll be shipping features. We'll zoom in on that feature loop. And then, of course, in writing a feature, you'll write code a bunch of times, and so we'll zoom in on that loop last. All right, so let's get started with this project loop. And the first thing that you'll need to do is pick languages and frameworks that you're going to use in this new project. So we've got your back. We are the open source developers of quite a few of the Bazel rule sets that you use today. In fact, 23% of the releases on the Bazel registry are from us. And a few of the notable releases that we've put up lately I've mentioned here, Rules OCI 2.0, Rules Lint is 1.0, Rules JS and TS were recently bumped, Rules Pi is now 1.0. So go check those out if you haven't. We've also now donated our foundational library, Bazel Lib, to the Linux Foundation, now that Bazel Contrib is owned there. And this is a wide-ranging, very useful library for writing build rules, but also things that you can put directly in your build files. For example, there's a very capable tar rule in here you should check out if you haven't. There's a talk from last year's BaselCon. We're very excited now that this is in the Linux Foundation that Fabian from BuildBuddy has offered to help co-maintain this with us. So there's no reason at this point that you should uh, hesitate to take a dependency on this library. OK, so the next thing you'll need to do is scaffold some new code. And if you're in an existing mono repo, maybe there's a process to pick a new name and run makejar, and that's pretty easy. But if you're starting a new Bazel project, here's Marvin. He's, uh, he lives inside of our terminal. Part of the aspect CLI is we have an init command. And this will create a new Bazel workspace for you. It's essentially a wizard that steps through which languages and frameworks you want to use. And it will give you a, re uh, a repository that has all of our recommendations for the best ways to use Bazel and be productive. Next, you'll need to, to provision your developer infrastructure. Workflows is very well known as the infrastructure as code layer to spin up persistent auto-scaling CI runners. Those live in your cloud, and they work with your existing CI system. We don't want to make you do any migrations. And we don't bill for usage. In my opinion, that would be wrong, because our goal here is for you to use less. So we don't want to be paid more. We've used uh, BuildBarn as our remote cache layer in Aspect Workflows from the beginning. I am proud to announce a couple weeks ago we have added remote build execution, also using BuildBarn. This is now live at one of our biggest customers. I believe they're here in the room. Uh, and they've already been uh, using this. So we do have RBE. Um, observability, this is an important characteristic for you to keep your Bazel builds running efficiently. So we have distributed tracing, distributed all the way from the invocation of the CI pipeline down to the individual actions that Bazel is later going to spawn. Very good visibility. And then we also, of course, produce metrics that you can use to power dashboards and alerting. Next, you have policy, KPIs, you know, the key performance indicators, things like the CI needs to stay fast. Uh, the budget, you know, consideration, like we can't spend too much money. Build cop, is the build staying green? Is it not getting too flaky? Reproducibility is obviously key for having high cash hits, which is part of having low costs. So we can help you out with all of those things. We've got several case studies. I don't have much time. I'll just highlight one of them here at SourceGraph. We hit these uh, promised Bazel benefit numbers of how much faster the build could be. At the same time, we saved them 40% of their compute costs. Our other case studies actually have higher numbers than that. 
One of the ways that we keep the build fast, of course, is to be able to detect non-determinism. So I'm happy to announce the next release of Aspect CLI it includes this explain command. And what it can do is take two compact execution logs. Thanks, uh, these are now part of Bazel 7. So these are the ones that were mentioned earlier today that are fast enough to produce on all, on all builds. What we see in this case is that we ran this on two builds in our own repo, and we found that 55 rebuilds were caused because of this Rust crate called Ring that produced some sort of non-deterministic output. So this immediately points us to where we need to go to fix that. Great, so now I'll zoom in to how it is that we ship features in this feature loop. First of all, you're gonna have to do some planning, hopefully. Uh, you can use our documentation site for this. We've got an excellent wide-ranging uh, set of documentation there for you. We also have a knowledge base that we publish on our blog where I've tried to list everything that we've learned from consulting for a lot of Bazel companies in the past. Then you'll write code, uh, but in order to do that, you may need our help because you run into Bazel problems. We have a support channel that your team can hook up and have our experts in your Slack, and then we can answer your questions and keep you unblocked. Next, a code review. So Marvin is back. Now Marvin is showing up here in GitHub because he's going to show up in your code review. The first place is we want to reduce the time to failure metric. We all have had the experience of waiting for CI, and then we go work on something else. And the context switching is a big part of what makes developers less productive. So to avoid that, Marvin can listen on the build event protocol as Bazel is running. And as soon as a failed test result pops up, it can, it's, Marvin then reports that as a real-time comment that's updated on your code review thread. So you don't need to click away to some other UI, it's right there in the place you're already looking. Additionally, uh, we now have the support for linting in this, in this flow. So Marvin can report that this linting tool found a problem with one of our source files, and also pr provides, if the tool provides a suggested fix that's plumbed through here as a suggestion that you can just accept in the GitHub UI. Works for all languages. Okay, now you're gonna to wanna to run CI CD. I mentioned that we bring up this uh, shared infrastructure for having dynamic, warm CI runners. In addition to that, we generate the pipeline definitions that you need on those CI hosts so that you can check in just a small file and we, our, our generator is Bazel aware, it knows what the pipeline should look like. It also provides selective delivery, which means that only the changed artifacts are going to be pushed from a green build on main. Okay, and then finally, let's zoom in on this coding loop. So the first step is to, of course, edit the code. We're just getting started here, but I can already promise you that our, our users don't have red squiggles in their editors. Their debugger is functional. The reason is that we take the philosophy that the file should simply go in the place that the editor and other tools expect. And so there are a few approaches for this. Write source files is a way to take outputs of, let's say, protocol buffer generation and put them in the source tree. Now tools just work. Node modules tree is laid out in the source folder if you're using NPM. If you're using Python, our rules create a virtual env and the editor immediately picks that up and offers developers all of the affordances that they're used to. For build, of course, we're using Bazel, but what about build files? We find that they're difficult to use and a, kind of a hard on-ramp. So uh, here's Marvin. We've taken the incredible Gazelle library and pre-compiled it for you as a, as a command called configure so that developers don't have to compile this themselves on their machines. We've spent quite a bit of time recently. Jason from our team has been profiling this at our biggest customer and has reduced the time for them to run Gazelle from 45 seconds average to 10. And we had, I'm very excited to announce that you can now write your own Gazelle extensions. This is the entire code listing for creating SH library targets, for, as an example, from all the bash and shell code in my repo. That's because we now can write these extensions in Starlark, the same language that you use to configure Bazel. So this is an incredibly powerful way to make sure that all languages are gonna have build file generation, not just for the few that have a Gazelle extension that's currently open source today. And of course, much more customizable. All right, testing, uh, Bazel lets use any test framework, but test failures are pretty hard to understand. We now have a web UI. Our web UI, here's Marvin, his arm broke off because this is a broken build. The thing that's different about our web UI is that it's in focus mode. This is not a UI for experts to go and understand all of Bazel's data model. This is just the information that a product engineer needs to understand what went wrong and how to get back to work. We've put a lot of effort into all the fine tuning of the developer experience here from many years of operating the system at Google and for our customers. And uh, you know, test case level data shows up here as well. There's a lot more than I can show right now. Please come by our booth if you haven't already, and we'll show you a live demo of our web UI running on one of our computers. Uh, Lint, I have a talk tomorrow on the open source part of Rules Lint. So this is the product talk. I'll just tell you what we've done to build Lint into our product. I mentioned earlier that it shows up in the code review. We also have a lint command in the aspect CLI. This will run the, all the linters for all the languages across your graph, but it also in, offers to apply those fixes in interactive mode, showing you each fix and letting you pick yes that you'd like to apply it. 
All right, so in only 10 minutes, it was a difficult task to go through all of these loops. I hope that this was a, a, a good representation for you of what I mean when I say a developer platform. This is the scope of what we would like to solve for you. Please, if you haven't gotten to Marvin already, uh, come by our booth and you can use the claw machine. I'm sure many of you have noticed it already. Uh, install our CLI with Brew if you're on a Mac. You can find other install instructions on the site. Uh, follow us on LinkedIn to get more updates. And of course, uh, we would love to sign a lot of you up for a free trial of our Workflows product. Thank you very much.